Usually shrimp boats don't have to parallel park to offload their haul. But this isn't your usual shrimp boat. The Miss Linda is the last boat, at least from this pier, to return from the Gulf of Mexico after the government shut down the industry following the massive oil spill that even before hitting the coast is radically altering the way of life for residents here in Venice, Louisiana. You know, after all this, I had two jobs, now I'm using both jobs. I work on the boat, when I'm not on the boat, I'm working on the land. And then I'm unloading the shrimp, so now I'm losing both jobs. I mean, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Located at the mouth of the Mississippi, the population here is made up of commercial fishermen like the shrimpers, recreational fishermen, and the oil companies. For years, these three industries existed side by side, but today, that relationship has been strained by a man-made disaster that no one saw coming not even those responsible. This kind of an incident is something you, you can't prepare for. Um, and, and what we're doing now is unprecedented. Uh, the kind of operations that we are deploying from a response standpoint, the kind of work that's happening on the, on the seabed floor, there is no manual for us to follow here. We are really creating it. We are pushing the technology envelope, and we have some of the best and broadest that are working on the solutions. Rick Jervis, USA Today's reporter in the region, talked with small business owner Renee Cross to see how this disaster would affect the town's relationship with the oil companies. What's the sort of relationship now after this this has happened, you think? And can this and can this sort of relationship continue? Yes, the relationship can continue. I feel like it will, as long as the oil companies step up to the plate and take care of their mistakes. We do live hand in hand with the oil companies. Louisiana revolves around the oil field industry. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So to say that we don't want to work with the oil companies is not correct. We want to work with the oil companies. We want them to take care of their mistakes. And so far, some local fishermen are disappointed with BP's early response to the spill. Right now, I could take you, we could jump in my boat and go 20 miles from here, and all you're going to see is oil booms and big crumpled up piles. Oh, really? You don't put an oil boom on a sandy beach. You can clean the beach. You need to protect these big inside bays where everything is, it grows up, it lives there. That's its nursery. Protect the nurseries. Once it gets inside the Roseau Cane, we're done. We're sunk. Environmentalists in the region are similarly dissatisfied with BP's response to the spill. Uh, they don't know how many booms are available. They're not deploying all the booms in some states. It's, you know, now they're getting the military involved. What the military is going to do, I don't know, although I understand they have a lot of boom available to them. So, you know, it, it just seems like they're, they're now trying to react and trying to figure out a way to react, but they haven't really got a plan. And I think that the lesson for the future is you need to plan for your worst case scenario, and this is the worst case scenario. <laughs> this worst case scenario has forced some crews to start breaking down their boats to get ready for possible jobs cleaning up the spill. As for the Miss Linda, they were at least able to freeze away some shrimp, which will almost certainly skyrocket in value as the Gulf Coast braces for what could be tough times ahead. Bill Delano reporting alongside Rick Jarvis for USA Today in Venice, Louisiana.